You're listening to Needless to Say, another disgraceful member of the Damaged Goods Podcast Network. Check out us and other great shows at damagedgoodsinc.com. Well, here it is, episode 52. That's one full year of weekly episodes, and I've got some stuff I'd like to say about it. I came up with the idea to do this show while having a few drinks. Well, okay, a lot of drinks. And asked my two dear friends if they'd do it with me. And the good friends that they are, they humored me. And a show was born. We've had good shows. We've had bad shows. We have changed formats countless times. But one thing we haven't changed is the opening intro. I think they've been a major part of the show and who we are. They lay the groundwork for the episode. And think they also show who we are and what we're about. Most are great. Some are okay. And then once in a while, you get a shitty one with a bad 1940s cadence. But we're still learning and we're still growing, mentally and some of us physically. Over the past year, we've argued, laughed, and I think Mike cried once. For me, this show has become a big part of my day-to-day routine, and I look forward to coming down to this basement every Friday. We've also made a few friends through the show, and I'd like to thank them for their support and being the loyal listeners that they are. I'd also like to thank the Damaged Goods Network. A network that already had a bunch of great shows, but still gave us a chance and accepted us onto their network, even after listening to our show. But most of all, I'd like to thank the two guys sitting at this table with me right now. Brad, I'd like to thank you for holding the rudder. You've been a major part of why this show has grown the way it has. You're able to rein in two guys who can get a little out of control and manage to put things back on track. Your incessant complaining and whining has made this show a lot better, even if you totally blew that 1940s newsreel intro. Also, as an undeniably heterosexual male married with two children, you manage to say things that make you sound gayer than the front row of a Bob Streisand concert, which is made for some great audio, and I thank you for that. Mike, we've been friends for a long time, brother. And I'd like to thank you for allowing us to turn your basement into NTS Studio. You're always making sure we ate, and you're constantly making food almost to the point of insanity. You also have stuck with us through some of the most difficult times in your life, and I'd like to thank you for that. You've been writing excellent closing remarks for the show and reading them with the passion of a fifth-grade special ed student. And your ability to pull off every episode with a lackadaisical, I don't give a shit approach is awe inspiring. What I'm trying to say is, needless to say, is only needless to say when all three of us are sitting at this table, and I wouldn't want it any other way. With that said, it's still my show, motherfuckers. Maestro, hit that music. And welcome back to a very special one-year anniversary episode of Needless to Say. I'm here with our special guests, Alex Jones and Ann Coulter. And speaking on their behalf will be Mike and Craig. So what's going on, <laughs> fellas? How's everybody doing this week? Great. They deported a whole bunch of people this week. <laughs> <laughs> Walls are being built. <laughs> are you talking on in Ann Coulter's behalf? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I see, yeah. <laughs> And my new broom just came in. I should be <laughs> f- arriving at fucking LaGuardia. In about I'm a an big hour. fan of Ann Coulter, though. I loved everything she ever did as a model, posing for every Iron Maiden cover ever. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man! Don't do that to Ed. Come on, dude. Don't do that. Yeah. To Don't do that to Eddie, please. Uh, it was a shame. She was actually going to be on air tonight, but a stiff breeze came by and blew her away. Yeah. So that was it. <laughs> So what's going on, Craig? Start us off. How was your week? I was uh, my typical work week. Uh, I uh, <laughs> I've been working all week again in another nursing home. So that's where you I, found Ann Coulter. Yes, all right. and I got another week to go there. Uh, next week we get to start the all timers unit. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Wow. That's great. Be prepared to introduce yourself no, seven it's times. Great. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. What are you to, doing? For three days, I'll have to explain to 
explain everything to everybody fucking over and over like fucking Groundhog Day. <laughs> it's going to be fucking awesome. Yep. Don't step in the glue. Don't step in the glue. Don't step in the glue. You can't shit over there. You can't just shit over there. How many times are you saying that to Adam? Yeah. And let me t- and, Which one? And, you can't yeah. shit over there or you don't step in the glue? And the other thing I realized is one in three old people are assholes. <laughs> That's true. You know, it's absolutely true. Not every you know, old person is sweet. No. Everyone, you know, you look, I see all these women walking around and I'm like, that's somebody's grandma and they're so cute with their walker and they smile at you. And then one smiles at you and the other one looks at you you're like, you're fucking up my day, dickhead. Yeah. And I'm like, what? What just happened? And she walks away with tennis balls on the floor. Yep. <laughs> but something happened to me today and I did not today. I'm sorry. It was Wednesday and I didn't write it down. I was saving it. So you guys wouldn't see it. Um, <laughs> Douche. I was kneeling down. We were at the ca- it was, I was trying to install near the cafeteria doors. And we thought we could get it done before they started filing out like fucking lemmings. They just fucking... They, they, it's insane. <laughs> it's not they, like and, a and No, it's like lemmings because they all just go into their rooms but to their deaths. Like, it's fucking horrible. <laughs> but this woman is coming by in a walker. You know, they start approaching the door. I didn't have, uh, I didn't have the flooring down. So what I did is I just grabbed some random flooring and threw it down so they could walk across the glue comfortably without tripping or anything, let them go across. So I'm putting it down, and this one woman just starts plowing through, you know, like, and I'm still trying to put it down. Interesting so choice of words. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so I'm kneeling down, and as she gets by me, she just literally blasts a fucking rumbling fart oh. right by my head. Like, right by my head. Now, I just bust out laughing because, <laughs> you know, it's disgusting. If you did it to me, I'd be like, what the fuck? You know, I knew this lady yeah. hadn't, she probably had no idea she fought it. No. You know what I mean? And I was just like, I got up, walked away, and immediately I was like, I got to go tell somebody about this. <laughs> yeah. So I immediately walk up to Frank. I'm like, hey, Frank, dude, you won't believe this is what happened. But, yeah, but at the same time, I was disgusted, you know. But I've been dealing with these people all week, and it's sad. It is. You know, I hate seeing them, and I'm, I don't want to go out like that. I mean, there's a bunch of people in this nursing home that, are, like, have their shit together, you know, and they're doing their thing, you know, going to the activity room and stuff. The fucking, oh, I got so mad. This one lady asked this old man, one of the nurses, you want to come into the day room and play the balloon game? Oh, I've heard that before. Right, and I'm like the balloon game. If that doesn't sound like rape, I don't know yeah. what does. But I can't wait. What to they would be do is they had wooden dowels Earth. with sponges on the end, and they would just put a balloon up, and everybody just tap it back and forth. And I'm like, this motherfucker choked Japs with his bare hands, <laughs> fucking at some point in his life, and, he's <laughs> and, and now he's fucking playing the balloon game. This guy stormed the beach of Normandy. <laughs> he's now going, he's playing the yeah. balloon game. Wow, he really traveled during World yeah. War II. <laughs> <laughs> no, die, you saying, kraut, die, just, you kraut. Die, yeah, you kraut. I'm just, just looking at him like, the room. this motherfucker <laughs> has seen more shit, done more shit. I'm sure of it. You know what I mean? Just because of his age. I'm like... He was involved at some point, somehow. You Why know? do we like, assume that, though? Why are you assuming he was a, a war hero because he's cause old? Odds are pretty high he was All right. at that point. But there's just as many odds that he was doing nothing, sitting at home, playing a balloon game with his kids when he was young. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, he's you're probably right. the one you're that right. brought it to yeah, the Yeah, that's it. Home. He introduced well, it to the senior center. It. Yeah. Because they but needed you know physical activity. My thing is, I guess... It, Other what, than crop dusting fucking... <laughs> God doesn't the fucking employees coming guy. in. Yeah. And by the way, if you don't think she knew she'd do that, you're so full of shit. <laughs> you were the highlight of her day. It Probably. took it took eight hours of planning to get up the nerve exactly. to walk past you and just drop ass. Hey Phyllis, watch this. Yeah. It wasn't even five it, minutes later. And it wasn't <laughs> like a silent, like, oh, is her diaper full? Or, and that's what that smell is. No, it was a straight up brap. Like, <laughs> but that thing smelled like a Twinkie she ate during Lyndon yeah. B. Johnson's <laughs> tenure. <laughs> but yeah, no. But what gets me, what queef. gets me mad is, like I said, is I look at that that old man. You know what I mean? And I'm looking at, it and they, you know, gonna bring him in to play the balloon game. And I'm like, this mother, whether whether he was a war hero or not, He's where's the, the dignity game. left in that? 
At least he can you play know? the balloon game, though. So. No, he could. He could. It'd be great if he was just like smacking that balloon at some old women, spiking it in their faces, <laughs> and he's like, "Want to fuck Lena, bitch?" Yeah. <laughs> Choke on this. Yeah. <laughs> Smack your balloons later. <laughs> Toss my salad. <laughs> well, that. <laughs> What the fuck? Let me get the stirrups to get my legs up. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go to the obstetrician unit. <laughs> well, anyway, Mike, how was your week? <laughs> Did you have anything like that at work? No, no, no geri- geriatric antics. No, unless you count me. But no, it's uh, freaking... Uh, the main thing, man, is the freaking weather. It's been so fucking hot. Too hot. Wicked hot. It's been ridiculous. Even at work, man. I mean, work's been great and everything, but fucking, like I said. Like the I air conditioning say, units is not working as hard. Sweat <laughs> in the AC. Well, we should let the it's listeners know. You're man. wearing a purple bandana like the lead singer of Suicidal Tendencies. Yeah, yeah, why? And I actually just wish you had them. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Fuck you. <laughs> anyway, another thing I'm freaking psyched about, fucking football is here. Football started. Awesome, preseason. Man. Yeah, preseason. But what does that mean? Cooler weather is coming. Yeah. Yes. Hopefully. I hope. <laughs> but... Yeah, that's about it. I so mean, work's work, good? Yeah, work's been great, man. It's challenging. You're breaking like all sorts of records it's here. Awesome, You're man. ruining all sorts of gambling it. right now. I love it. Right? Man. Yeah. I love it. We had an over-under of five weeks for this one. Yeah, we did. And that's only because your uncle was working there. Never yeah. <laughs> Never ending. We got, a, we got a nice big lunch paid for today. It was great. Nice. We got some some swag. Fringe did benefits. You? They didn't offer you that at Dollar They King? gave him purple bandanas to hand them <laughs> out to everybody. <laughs> was nice, nice, cool, uh, they actually just grabbed nice out of the cool rag shirts. box in the back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, hey, look, these are in here. <laughs> Is that nice thing? I need you yeah. to get like a plaid short sleeve shirt and just button the top button and leave the other ones open. You want me to go do it right yeah, now? I, I got one upstairs. <laughs> if your collar was even remotely ironed, I would tell you to do it. <laughs> but that's that. My week, uh, you know, I spent a lot of time this week and the guys have been bitching and moaning about me bitching and moaning but i didn't like last week's episode so much i wasn't a huge fan no you were sad i thought you guys were great i thought you guys were great i'm not criticizing you guys i just thought i i came in i wasn't feeling well but that's not an excuse I just had an off week, and it came Mike's around. used it as an excuse like nine times. Yeah, well, <laughs> you, you were feeling sick. I nah, was feeling he was, like he was, shit. I was a little off my great. game, but I yep. feel like I was a little off in terms of reaction, and I was a little sloppy, a little unfunny. And the intro, in my opinion, your sound effects were phenomenal, but you made me sound way better than I actually was. I thought that was a horse shit intro. And I enjoyed it. It's one that I, I won't play it. again. My 1940s announcer voice sounded an awful lot like my college commencement speaker voice. And that's not something I'm proud of. You know, I tried to diversify a little bit. I was better off telling an old joke and making Mike kiss men on the bridge. Maybe everybody at your commencement speech was like, this motherfucker sounds like a 1940s newsreel announcer. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, thought, just, I thought it was great. Oh, nah. I appreciate that. And you guys have been good. But I, I think the one thing I never want to be on the show is corny as fuck. Yep. And yet I feel like last week I was corny as fuck from beginning to end. So thankfully it was a short episode. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think you guys both did a phenomenal job, man. The editing and putting well, the editing is never together and you uh, I I, intro, I enjoyed I it, it but great. I get, I get it cuz I've done I've done intros that I wasn't happy with. I've had episodes that I wasn't happy with and once you get that in your head that's it. It's over. You, but we also you know got to I mean? just leave it alone. It's yeah. a moment in time. It's, it's done. It's a moment in time. It's, it's done. I, I, like I, I said in the intro, speaking. we've had good shows. We've had bad shows. Uh, it's the way it rolls. Yeah. Just with every show. I shouldn't even be speaking. I did like what? Two? Yeah. Well, one of them was great. <laughs> and the other one, Craig had to interrupt with a voice from the future. <laughs> yes, thank yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm glad yeah. he did. But, uh, I, you know, I, I'm going to cancel my next intro, which was going to be a carnival barker from the 60s. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Fuck Step it. right up. Fuck pay it. a dollar. <laughs> Step right up, yeah. Step right up. Play a dollar. Dun, 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 dun. I, I feel like I need to regroup. Kind of remember how to do this. Yep. Because you know what, guys? It's been a fucking year. It's been a year. 52 weeks of being live on the internet. 
Yes. I know we said we didn't want to make a big deal out of this, right? You know, yeah. but we have to kind of look back. You know, we have to think about the fact that, yeah, nobody thought we'd make it this far, including us and our yeah. wives <laughs> yeah, and, and everybody that knows us. Yeah. <laughs> but there's also the fact that we lost episode two. And episode two was actually pretty, pretty key to what we're going to talk about tonight. Yes. Yeah, one of the things we're talking about in episode two was all of the things that ended too soon. So it only seems right at 52 weeks celebrating one year of doing this show that we can say, well, what things do we like in our, in our life, in pop culture, in, yeah. in things that we enjoy watching, entertainment, if you will, what things ended too soon? You know, because we're on an, our own network. Okay, we're doing our own show. Even if yeah. Damaged Goods drops us, we still got a show. Yeah. Nobody can cancel us. But that's not always true. That's like, the thing about the, the wonder about the internet is nobody can cancel you. Damn we can just keep fucking straight. spitting them out there. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> into the ether. We can you know? talk to the same 81 people. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? As long as those 81 people listen, we're going to keep fucking doing the show. Yep. We and we need them to fuck. buy merch. We needed yes. 81 people to buy at least three items of merchandise. Yeah. <laughs> but we'll talk about that at the end of the show. Yeah. But anyway, uh, but yeah, I, I, we talked about this in the very mysterious lost episode two. Yep. And uh, one of those things was what TV shows did we love that got canceled too soon? You know, we don't want to be canceled. No. And we can't be. But what things didn't have that kind of creative freedom? So, start with you, Craig, since it's your show. I mean, there's there's a lot of them. There 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 was shows out there, a lot of spinoffs, a lot of different shit. They got canceled right off the bat that I liked, you know. But then, you know, then there's ones that stick out, like the Michael J. Fox show. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought I thought they were really shaking things up, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I love that wow. show. <laughs> I watched that show. It was good. Uh, I was just disappointed because he was like a news guy. And yeah. I really, uh, yeah, he was like a, a newscaster, and I really thought it was just him standing still making milkshakes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> he was working at a 7-Eleven or something in the corner. <laughs> like people came by with 31 flavors, and he just stood there and did his thing. Yeah. Fuck. No, but I mean, like, like that was a great show because I like him a lot. My OJ Fox was funny. He's a great. He's a great actor, you know. I mean, shit. Back to the Future. Oh yeah. Family Ties. Great in Family Ties. Definitely. You know, he was at that point more famous than Tom Hanks, where Tom Hanks was just a guest on Family Ties. You know what I mean? Well, at, it, at that time. At yeah. that time, they wanted you him know, for so time. many movies. I think he was supposed to be in Ferris Bueller, probably, which we're going to discuss in a minute. Yep. And I, I think he was in the running for like basically every teen lead in, in the oh, world. Oh, absolutely. He made the biggest mistake, in my opinion, of following up Back to the Future with that fucking piece of shit. Teen Wolf. Teen Wolf. Yeah. Yeah. Which was a horrendous it movie and a horrendous premise. If I watched that guy shoot a basketball, though, had I known he had Parkinson's disease, I wouldn't have laughed so much at him <laughs> shooting a basketball. <laughs> but watch him shoot a ball. My God. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was brutal. But I mean... You know, you could have been the, the Terminator. Back to, back to the Future is a timeless, fucking classic. Yeah, it's you a know? fun movie to watch. And, and, uh, fucking, you know? it's a great movie to watch. Oh yeah, and, I mean, as far as movies where teenagers hang out with creepy old men who, <laughs> yeah, who exactly. work in their garage, like and, I yeah. said, it's a fun movie to watch. Yes. Yeah. You know <laughs> hey, Marty, bend over. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck a thousand gigawatts well in your butthole. <laughs> and, uh, 88, 88, 88, 88, 88. It hurts. It hurts. It's the flux capacitor. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, right in the back of a mall. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> and fucking Iranians show up with rocket launches. <laughs> <laughs> it was fucking insane, but great uh, fucking movie. Oh, no, pedophilia you know, side, absolutely right. Yeah, definitely. And uh, <laughs> I mean, he did a lot of good stuff between that. You know, then he went in a serious streak where he started that movie with uh, what's her name? Uh, she hot? No, the, the, no, they did that rock and roll. They were like band members together with Joan Jett. Joan Jett, yes, that's oh, who it was. That's Joan right. Jett. 
Yeah. That's right. Can't think of the name of the movie. It's totally slipping my mind. It was called mind. Eddie and the Shakers. <laughs> <laughs> I can't right. think of it. But, you know, you know, he tried that. That didn't work out so well. You know, and he went back to other stuff. But he's done other things recently that are actually good. Well, I think he should actually make a movie now called The Secret of My Success is Twitching. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, but he did that. <laughs> He did that. He did that episode of uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm. Yeah, which is fucking great because you no, know, the whole episode. Um, Larry David is on the first floor, and all you can hear upstairs above him in the room above him is just banging on the floor. So Larry David goes to the office and he complains. He's complaining, and yeah. as he's complaining, Michael J. Fox comes downstairs. <laughs> And he's like, hey, yeah, I'm in the room above you. <laughs> it was from him twitching. And it's just so fucking funny. It's, I mean, great shit right there. Yeah. For years, and I thought he was faking it. I thought he was. I didn't deny that he had Parkinson's, but I know people with Parkinson's. And you and, thought he was being and well, he, with he, it. He, well, I thought he was exaggerating it whenever he went on the morning talk shows. Because it seemed like he yeah. was making movies and he was doing all that and everything was fine. And then the instant he announced he had Parkinson's, all of a sudden he's like all over yeah. the place. And he would claim that he wasn't taking his medication that day. Why the fuck not? Yeah. Like because he wants to, he wants to, you know, put that out. Well, there. I think he that's was, an obscene that. yeah. thing. Yeah, it is pretty obscene. But I mean, so, but he did I mean things I'm like, skeptical. I'm like they yeah, said, when yeah. he did that uh, two years back, was it the, was it the, uh, the, uh, Grand, uh, the Oscars or whatever, when him and um, Christopher Lloyd came out? And did the Back to the Future thing? On um, they no, they came out on the stage and they did. They pulled up in a DeLorean, and they did the whole thing. Hey Marty, you know they did that whole shit, and he was shaking a little bit. He wasn't that bad, but they said they delayed that section, and they said that he fucking had the limo drive around the block about three or four times because he was fucking shaking out of control. Why didn't they just go Back to the Future? <laughs> I don't get it. What the fuck yeah. is the problem? He's like, slap that flux capacitor on it. Fucking hook me up. Parkinson's disease. All right, yeah. I'm gonna go back in time. Fucking no, I don't. I did it. Yeah. And wow, holy shit, Leah Thompson's hot again. Yeah. yeah. See? How fucking great would that be? That was great. And then the, the same movie that told everybody that a white guy invented rock and roll. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yep. Right. Wow. Right Never even thought about that. Yeah, you tell me uh, some fucking cracker from Mill Valley invented Johnny B. Good. Get yeah, the fuck yeah. out. Exactly. I never even thought about that fucking racist aspect of fucking Back to the Future. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So the point it was, was made in the eighties, kid. Of course, it was racist. Yeah. Everything was racist back Which is then. Just why Mike doesn't watch anything made after that. Yes. Eighties <laughs> is my cutoff point, man. So the Michael J. Fox show where he plays a newsman, you think that deserved another season? I think so. I never even seen an episode. I think of it. I think it did. I don't even we watched it. It was fine. I think it could have progressed. That's the thing. Oh, it would you definitely progress, uh, but not in the way you <laughs> you would like. No, you, I think like a lot of those shows try to find their footing in the beginning. And maybe it didn't, you know what I mean? And I think it would have. Biggest Find mistake they made footing. was not giving it a real Kid, name. You're, you're like just, you got all kinds of jokes right there. I was, you know, that was, I know, but. I was serious. The biggest mistake they made was not giving that show a name. Anytime you'd label yeah. something the blank show and it's yeah. just some dude's name, yeah. you're just asking for trouble. You know, like they called Seinfeld Seinfeld, but at that point, nobody knew who Jerry Seinfeld was. No, so, yeah. So, so that out. was just a character name yeah. at that point. At that point, he was like the, the house boy on Benson. Yep. You know, he, he wasn't a fucking name. And that's what made the show great. <laughs> yeah. The house boy on Benson was Benson, dude. Oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Why, it was it? What the fuck? Didn't Come he on. become governor? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he did become governor. He, he went from house boy to governor. Now that is an American tale right yeah, there. Right? Oh That's my an American God. tale. Well, you, we were talking about the 80s. <laughs> That's an American that tale, though. Well. And he did it without ever once banging that German chick. I yeah. know, I know. Kraus or whatever. Yeah, Kraus. Yes. I mean, could they have put that name any closer to no, Kraut? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's a show that we should have been canceled and wasn't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't know, man. I think uh, 
some of the TV shows I was thinking about. There's a great show called Sports Night. Yep. And it was an Aaron Sorkin show. And if you know anything about Aaron Sorkin shows, most of them get canceled after one season. Yeah. And the ones that make it do really well, like The West Wing and shows like that, they were huge. Sports Night was a take on the ESPN sports desk kind of vibe. Sports Yeah, I, re- I do remember that. And it, it had a really good cast, and it actually had Benson in it. <laughs> no, way. no way. I saw that as an opportunity. Yeah. Let me guess. Let me guess. Basketball analyst. Actually, he was the boss of the whole thing because he was the former governor. You racist fuck. Oh, son yeah. of a... Exactly. I'm sorry. But it had on. a really good cast. And no, he's joking. He pocked cars. <laughs> oh, he stole cars. One of those two. <laughs> they didn't even change his name. They just called him Benson. <laughs> Benson. <laughs> <laughs> but Sports Night was good, and it, the problem was it was over the head. Everybody expected like this slapstick comedy. It was a half yeah. hour show, yeah. But it got really dark because these guys were dealing with personal trauma and all this other stuff, and they didn't know what to do with this show. And so I think ultimately, if they rebooted Sports Night, it would be a much better show today. Yeah, but it was ahead of and its time. Th- that would be a show that's rebooted on a network that allows it to be dark. I think more I think, or less. It too. wasn't dark. It was just maudlin. And I think that's where they yeah. got caught up. And they actually had Aaron Sorkin also made that um, studio 60, which was about the guys who wrote for like the Saturday night live show. Yeah. Had Matthew Perry in it and the guy from the West wing and all those other, that was a great show, but it was supposed to be about a comedy television show. And all they did was talk about how dark their lives were. Yeah. And so yeah. Shit, shit got lost in there, you know, yeah. and it was, it wasn't a good thing, but the, the, you know, that's my contribution. But what I'm thinking about that is with, with sports night is the fact that it's all sports guys. You know, you, you're thinking when you think that you think of beer drinking guys watching football, you know, there's going to be swearing. There's going to be talk of, you know, Sounds like everything has been going on tonight. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so I think it would have done better on a different network, maybe. I think it would have done better in 2018. You know, yeah. I would love yes. to see how they That's handled I mean. the kneeling scandal in the NFL. Um, great. Mike, TV shows, you have anything to offer here? What TV shows do you think got canceled too soon? Well, I don't or know about didn't TV get... shows, but can we, can we talk a little bit about uh, movies that didn't get some sequels? That would be, you know what well, I mean? Well, I think we can do That's, that. Yeah. And if Craig comes in with the Game of Thrones movie, I'll kick him in his <laughs> fucking horse teeth. <laughs> Was there a Game of Thrones movie? No. There will be. Jesus Thank Christ, God. kid. Thank God. The lack of fucking entertainment knowledge is beyond it's fucking not, anything. No, it's not. It's, no, it is it, beyond no, anything. It, no, Forget it's not it. Just stop. Go on. No. By the way, Richard Nixon resigned. Yeah. Did he? He was a crook. I knew it. Fucking <laughs> but Spinal Tap. You wow. think? That, yeah. You think? Well, they made it a sequel been, album. An yeah, album. Yeah. But yeah, the movie. Yeah. I think the movie would have been good. It would have been. Great. I would have loved to have seen where they were now. They, now yeah, that's. Yeah. They tried to do that at the end of the movie where they showed them all separately and not. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah. I think honestly, they a reunion. A tour. reunion tour. Yes. Yeah, like the Eagles like came back and now they're on their eighth tour yeah, of yeah, their reunion yeah. tour. Each one of them think, five years long. Yeah, yes, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think that would be spectacular. I would yeah, I would definitely I would watch it. that. I would watch it. I thought that album they made as the sequel in the early nineties, they had that song Break Like the Wind. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I yep. would have loved to have seen the Break Like the Wind tour documentary. And you bring back everybody. You bring back Rob Reiner. Yeah. And you bring back that annoying bitch from the nanny. Uh, oh, uh, oh yeah, uh, Fran Drescher. Fran Drescher, yep. I, I say you bring them all back and you do a, another documentary of the band trying to find their legs yeah, in, definitely. The, in modern like, days. What, yeah. are, what, are, what are any of these actors doing well, now? Well, they're all working. One of them's on Better Call Saul. Yep. Yeah. They're, they're yeah, all anymore. working. Yeah. But, Not anymore. He's done. Spoiler alert. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he went up in flames. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I think the Spinal Tap's a very good call. Yeah, I mean, what are the what are the movies? I think E. T. E. T. E. T. How do you not make a sequel to the biggest no, movie of the eighties? Right, right. I right. sat on the floor in a movie theater to watch that in movie. Bristol. Yep. So when that came, Bristol. when that came to t- it came, there used to be a, a movie theater in town, Bristol Cinema. I think I've mentioned it before on the show. Small, th- small two screen the- theater. Was it, you know, was it two was screens? It two screens? Yeah, it was two screens. 
two screen theater. Oh, that's right. And uh, they were it wasn't a small viewing area. There was a lot of seats in there and stuff. And I remember they were showing ET on both screens, and every show was sold out to a point that people were complaining. And I remember I knew because I worked there for a little while as a kid. I just started cl- cleaning up when I was about twelve, thirteen, so I could watch movies. And eat, eat gummy bears. Yeah, and stuff. no, well, I wasn't supposed to eat the candy, but I was taking it by the shitload. Sour but Patch I, Kids. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, I remember going and Sue. Her name was Sue. She owned it. She opened it up and she was letting people in to stand in the back of the theater, sit in the aisle. And watch the movie. And I sat there with my two cousins sitting in the aisle. My grandmother sat in one seat. I remember a guy gave it to my grandmother. It was packed. I remember a guy got up and let my grandmother sit down. And he sat on the floor in front of us. And you the fire I mean? marshal was sitting in the front row. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like, and yes, I watched that did. movie sitting on the floor in a movie theater. That's how big that movie But was. don't you think it deserved a sequel? Absolutely. He got kind of rushed off Earth. Yeah, you got chased. They had to fly him through the sky yeah, on bikes. I mean, but, He's a what, fucking what, speaking what, spell what, to fucking imagine, communicate yeah. with. Yeah, imagine and Mike still doesn't own a phone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. I'll get one tomorrow, bitch. Okay, I promise. I'll, I'll believe. Well, it imagine I that but sequel with them two getting him and uh, what was Elliot. His name? and Elliot. Well, I would imagine the he aliens have to, you know, I, I, not to cut you off, no, but I think no. the aliens came to Earth for a reason. And they got chased away, and that's how he got lost. He got left behind. Yeah. Why not have the aliens come back and be like, we didn't get what we wanted. We want to land in the Hollywood Hills. Yeah. Okay, and we want to get more white trash Californian specimens. <laughs> well, but, the whole premise was they, they got stranded there is what happened or something. Well, he did. Happened. He did. Oh, and they, he comes back, yeah. Drew Barrymore's a psycho, flash her tits at yes, all the aliens. Yeah. And so he'd bring all <laughs> those people back. But, I would right? love to see an E.T. sequel, White Trash Drew Barrymore. Yes. Right? It would yeah. Be awesome. An unemployed Henry, when, whatever back, his name was, is. When, when yeah. was she like turned into a derelict for a while? And then she came back. And well, she started doing blow right after that movie. Yeah. She was eight. Eight. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. she went on a good, Same, yeah, she went started. on a good like ten years spree of being a complete fucking lunatic. So I think that would have been a good place to pick up. Yeah, right. Perfect. I know the older brother hasn't worked since that movie. No. I think uh, the guy who played Elliot hasn't worked since that movie, no. other than playing like pedophile number two on SVU. <laughs> yeah. So I think there's plenty of acting opportunity. I know they're all free. Yeah, exactly. Okay, why not make yep. a sequel? Et comes back and he finds out that Elliot's like. An accountant at a third rate H and R block. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he tries to sneak him in. He's sitting there, he's cheating suit. people out of their taxes. Yeah, he phone home. He's like, he- press nine. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Siri. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Even ET's all fucked he's, up with this hey, technology. Siri, contact Alpha Centauri. I just yeah. said, hey, Siri, my phone turned on. Yeah. <laughs> The mother, the mother in ET, she was at Cujo. That was the other yeah, movie she was yeah, in. She yeah. was, she was the mother in Cujo. This is another one, huh? Uh, that there was a great no movie. Cujo too. Of course not, because the dog died, and so did the kid. Well, you know, who had, had pups. And, and if anybody read the book, <laughs> if anybody read the book, yeah, the kid died. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think they should have made a sequel to Marley and Me, just called Me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But what I mean, other movies are I'm talking too much talk I'm, I'm going to say Close Encounters You talk about alien movies yeah. I would say Close Encounters Of the Third Kind Such a great Would have been I love Even it. better than Aliens To have a sequel to I mean better than Aliens Better than E.T. To have a sequel to Because of the alien aspect The way things were Yeah because um, E.T. Wasn't an alien Well Richard's Richard <laughs> Dreyfus <laughs> Because of the alien aspect um, Richard Dreyfus At the end of clo- Spoiler alert you know, gets onto the spaceship and takes off. But before he does that, you have um, pilots that went missing in the Bermuda Triangle, technically. And that's what they were doing. You know? Uh, see, motherfucker, and, I had never seen this movie. You're ruining yeah, it. Yeah, see? Don't tell them, man. So, don't tell them. I know, I know fucking, it's 48 you had your, years old. It's you had, awesome, bro. You had I'm your fucking you chance it, fucking 30 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> 30. <laughs> so, you know... So seeing that they're coming off and they're still oh, the look, same you age, keep going. Shh, okay. you know what, what I'm what I'm saying is they're coming off and they're still the same age. So it would be great to see Richard Dreyfus' character come back at the same years later while his dead. kids 
that thought he was insane when you know his his wife left him and stuff. His kids thought he was fucking crazy. It would be great to see him come back. That's a great idea. You know what I mean? I'd love to see him older come back as him Mr. Holland. His age. He, they're his age, his and he age shows up the same age as they are. Like, hey, that what's up? It's going to take cool. some special Let's effects. build some mashed potatoes mountains. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, you know what I mean? That was yeah. cool, man. I was going to make a Mr. Holland joke, but I let it go. Yeah. No, I get you wouldn't <laughs> be able to use Richard Dreyfus. You know what I mean? But, I mean, I think that would be a good sequel to see that Definitely, come back man. and... And basically, the cycle starts over again, type thing. You know what I mean? I don't know. I don't know. Why? What do you got? Well, I think you should do something where people age normally. I think uh, Ferris Bueller is a good example of that. Yes. Okay. We all watch him. He got home. Yeah. Be and he got away with it just like he always did. I'd like to see where Sloan is now. I'd like to see where Cameron is now. Yeah. I think jennifer gray could probably use a fucking job because she got a nose job and actually killed her career yeah she had a nose like mine yeah and and now she's unemployed basically. she was working on everything and she wasn't unattractive no no well, she all. made dirty dancing and gave patrick swayze cancer yeah yeah <laughs> yeah that was yeah that's true that's why she got the nose job because the nose gave from him- the plastic in her nose job. Yeah, absolutely <laughs> debilitating cancer. Yeah. <laughs> just, just ravaged Patrick Swayze. Yeah. <laughs> he went from roadhouse to no house very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I think Jennifer Grey would come back. I think everybody would come back in that movie, including the guy who, I, not that I have said pedophile enough tonight, but the principal yes. was an actual pedophile. Yeah. Was he really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, he got arrested. Yeah. For, seriously, turn on the computer. I think that you could get all the actors back and really have a good sequel where he's taking a day off of work. Why that, is that, why is wow. that so hard? Right. You know, and he calls up the old crew and they're all working in Chicago. Yeah. And they all hate their lives. You got to think that is a great fucking idea. Yeah. And, and they all call why, in sick to work. That's it. That's and then, then you it. do the same fucking routine. You could write the same goddamn movie. That yeah. idea. That idea. Except this time he be. doesn't catch the foul ball. Right. Yeah, 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 exactly. yeah, exactly. And I stepped on you again, Mike. No, no, but that idea had to be kicked around. It's got a, that's like a, a great fucking idea. Has it? Because it's, it's brilliant. Be. And if it's it has, be. and if it has, nobody, and nobody's taking if it. No one picks it up stupid. there. And, well, I think okay, I would go and see it tomorrow. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm just saying I would go and see it tomorrow. It's, so if they're missing great. it, that's fucked up. Ferris Bueller's next day off. You don't even have to put a two behind it. No. Okay, I think that people would flock to see this thing. And I would it, go see it. It yeah. would be a cheap film to make and an easy way to make money. Yep. And you know what? Since we're talking about John Hughes, I'll throw another one at you. Breakfast Club. Absolutely. 100%. I had that on my list yep. as, a, as a sequel movie. Fuck yeah. Love that. That's a classic. And it's in my top 10. I seen it. I was young. I wasn't even in high school yet when I seen it. No, I thought you were going to say I wasn't in high. No. <laughs> no, you weren't. Yeah, yeah, I, I, know that. Seen, I saw it in the fifth grade. And I'm like, is this what high school is? Because I thought they were the most mature I, yeah. adult people I had ever seen in yeah, a movie. I was yeah. just about to go from middle school to high school when that came out. And I remember going to see it and loved it. And I've seen, you know, and I've seen it a thousand times since then. Because if it's on, I'm going to watch it. You know what I mean? And I've, I've actually went on demand and watched it a bunch of times because it's that good. I think it would be so easy to make because you could take the characters you never expected. Because one thing I can tell you, I went to my high school reunion a few years ago, my 20-year That's reunion. That's exactly what I was going to say, and, the high school reunion. And I saw some people, and I won't name names, obviously. I saw some people that we, to be quite honest with you, didn't expect much from that turned out to be fucking phenomenal at what they do. Yep. And I saw some people, and I was in this crew, <laughs> where a lot of people expected us to be big, and life didn't quite pan out. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm doing all right. Things are good, but do what? Did I really think I was going to be doing what I'm doing right now? No. Yeah. And so, you know, life's not a straight line, and I think that would be a great way to flip the table on the Breakfast Club, where you see the popular girl and the popular athlete. 
Well, guess what? He didn't Scraping get a by. he didn't get a wrestling scholarship. Yeah. Or maybe he realized that there is no future in yeah. professional wrestling. And you see, Judd Nelson owns the most successful fucking body shop or mechanic That's shop. It. He's in got town. a chain of them. Yeah. You know, and he's running the, the all over Illinois. Yeah. He's just he's he's running like like um like a Mako. Yeah. You know, over there, and he's running them all. Yeah. And he and he's killing it. And then you get the nerdy kid. Who turns out to be exactly what we expected what we nerdy expected. kids to be. Yeah. And he's running. He's a captain of industry now. Yep. He's got his yeah. own, his own. And maybe they flip the table business. and where do they meet up? What I'm thinking is they go back for their high school reunion. They get there. Everybody's doing their thing. And everybody gets kind of, they get kind of bored at what's going on. But they, they all congregate together. And they start talking. They move from the gymnasium and they go Grab, they grab some drinks. They grab, you know, a bottle of champagne. They grab some things and they go and sit in the library. I was thinking that they would go in the stairwell one by one and they all start wanting to smoke weed. Yeah. yeah. Well, well yeah. what I'm saying is they go in the library again. Wow. And they sit in I there get, I'll be right and they back, smoke guys. weed in the stairwell, stairwell and they go in the library and they, you know, and they start drinking that bottle of champagne and then someone else pulls out a bottle of booze and they, and they party in there. And it turns out at night they're away from their kids. And their responsibilities now. As long as they flip detention, the table. Detention is no longer detention. It's an escape from their regular life. And I, yeah, that would be a beautiful premise. And I would love it if they Very smoked good. up the fucking principal. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. And he came back and did that. And, you know, he does the whole bull in the horns. Bull in the that horns, whole, yeah. That, I think that, that could actually be a great movie. Name one person over the age of 30 who wouldn't go to see that movie right now. Mike, because he fucking no, because it was just made I last week. That. Yeah. You know what? The no, I would definitely go see that, even though I didn't see Breakfast Club till like ten or fifteen years after it came out. Because <laughs> I was like, Christ. Nah, it's gay. <laughs> Why the fuck do we hang out with you? I don't know. I just not. I was into it. All right, man. give me a movie then. Give me a movie it. that you got. What do you got? I I got nothing, man. I got nothing. The bridge Come over on. the river, Kwai. <laughs> wow. <laughs> You know what? Yeah, he was equal to that. It would was been a great. to it. It was, like, it it was, was a fucking Hiroshima bomb. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, there was there was another part after that. I, I would think it would be great know. if you came back and said, "I want to see Drawbridge over the br- river." Yeah. Kwai. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see bodies floating down the river Kwai. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that I would go see. Yeah. We got anything else? What other movies are we thinking? I mean, I I would love to see a sequel to Passion of the Christ. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. That plot had a lot of holes in it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I don't know. People have been waiting for that movie to come out for two thousand years, dude. We're gonna wait. I, 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 I have love a it. Just comes riding time. in on a donkey, shooting lasers out of his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love it. Right, I would watch that. Are you kidding me? John Woo presents Passion of the Christ. Yeah. <laughs> John Woo. <laughs> Christ <laughs> Boogaloo. He's supposed to put on, <laughs> kicks the bottom of the cross out, busts the arm <laughs> over his back, and just starts whipping around like nunchuck. He could do it up uh, like, no. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. Boom, like and he sits balls. there and he starts launching fucking giant nails at Jesus people. Like sitting there, he's like Might starring been, Jason boom, Statham boom, boom. as Barabbas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh shit! Where he speaks with an Australian yeah. accent. <laughs> Mel Gibson is Pontius Pilate. <laughs> Mel Gibson is the happy narrator. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jesus Christ. Boy, oh boy. What about music? This was episode two, so we got to go back. Let's yeah, dig back. Music, huh? What bands, uh, obviously it's not a one-year thing, but what bands do we think didn't get the popular lifespan? It's like some of them are still going. <laughs> they never gave up, yeah. and it's sad to watch, but we'll still pay to go see them. Yeah. But like, what bands should have been huge in war? Like they had a taste of it. Yeah, they got a taste of it, but they weren't good enough to... Well, I mean, not saying they weren't, like, talented musicians or anything, but they didn't produce anything to continue that. So they only got any... Yeah, Mocky Mock blame. and the Funky Bunch. <laughs> <laughs> I totally think if he could give up his acting career... 
he would he be, would totally go back to yep, the front exactly. bunch, and then totally. also modeling underwear which yep. for the record is the one thing in the world nobody needs to model <laughs> yeah. Yeah. we're all buying it get over it. <laughs> yeah it's like toilet it's paper model. commercials exactly I know. with cartoon but, bears I got a picture of a bear wiping their ass with furry ashes. I'm like, I relate to this way too much. I want to. I want, just want to wipe my ass with the bear. <laughs> but I mean, music wise, I, that's 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 a, a Berenstain. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. That is, that is a terrible funny. joke. Too. I, it's it's, that out. it's no, an awesome that was, joke. No, I ever heard that was the a great one. Bears I like that one. Forever doing oh, that. That's shit. funny. That no, nah, but I mean, I don't know. There's a lot of bands. Like I've discussed uh, Dangerous Toys. Actually, you mentioned this Dangerous Toys. I love that. Was guys. your idea? You said that Dangerous Toys. You before I've heard you say you would like them to come. Well, they came out so. in the tail end of the hair metal thing, and they weren't really a hair metal band. No. They were more of kind of just a bluesy, hard rock band. They had a lot of musical chops in that band. I don't yeah, think no, many people know this. Talented. The, the singer and a couple other guys in the band played in other bands. Yeah. They were way more technical and way more musically adapted. This was kind of a side project for them, and it turned into something bigger. Something bigger, because bigger, they had that one hit. And they, Teasing, and they, pleasing. Yeah. And there was uh, Sporting there was a Woody one. and yeah. all those. Yeah. I, I think they should have been huge. If I listen to Aerosmith now, writing the same song for the last 25 years, yeah. Why the hell isn't Dangerous Toys big? I know they're dicks. I know you had a run in with them. I did. I yes. had a run in with them. They're not nice guys. No, not at all. But I, you know, I didn't pay to see nice guys. I paid to see a rock and roll band, and they yep. fucking killed it. So that's me. I uh, think they just fail. I just think they. Uh, who knows? The thing is, you can get burned like that. Song should still be, and I bet you it is still played occasionally. But my thing is, if you. They were dicks right out of the gate when I met them. So I guarantee you they were dicks to (laughs) people at radio stations. They were dicks to people at the venue that ran the venue. And they were dicks to everybody else. So you know what? That kind of blackballs you a little bit. And a radio station, you're going to be like, hey, can we do an interview with you? Oh, we don't need to do an interview with you. Fuck you. Who do you think you are? How about this? Fuck you. We don't play a song anymore. <laughs> How about your fucking... song is named Sportin' yeah. Woody? So, yeah, we're not going yeah, so to not not play, play it. <laughs> and fuck you and your old ass fucking dirty groupies, which they were. Oh, uh, they were wrinkly. Gross. Yeah, they, they were it some was gross. shag. Yeah. I'm just going to name a rare band that I love, but only, well, because of Metallica, I found out about them is Diamond Head. Diamond Head. No, I Such yeah I know man. Diamond Head awesome is, man. and it's funny that yeah they weren't as um, Metallica does like three or four of their covers, man. Am I cover evil? They, Am I evil? A lot of them made Metallica. A lot of their covers made Metallica famous. Yeah, definitely. Am I evil? Uh, what else? Small. I, was it small? Small hours, hours and brain, crash course and brain surgery. I don't know if crash course. No, was, but I'm not sure. I'm not I exactly think it, sure I don't know. But yeah, Something I know what great. you're saying. A lot they, of people put them down at the time because they had horns and stuff in their in their band, but they are fucking incredible, man. Yeah, the and, was and then put them great. down at the time, and then two years later, fucking Mighty Mighty Boss Tones came out. Yeah, and everybody fucking loved them. Which don't get me wrong, Mighty Boy no, and Boss Tones are fucking awesome. Diamond Head band, though, but great band. Yeah. No, you're I right. Much from from them, you know. I I just thought they should have been more popular. But what do you think, Brad? All right, I'm going to make a really unpopular opinion here. But I, I've done this a few times since I went down to the basement no. of that fucking place in New York City called Blue. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we all have bad judgment. We all have uh, dirty secret memories that we all like, right? Yep. I'm going to say a band that I think should have been bigger. And they got huge for a very short period. Huge. But I'm going to say, I think a band that's still got a bum rap, I'm going to throw it out there, Limp Biscuit. Yeah, they, yeah, they did. Rap. They blew up big. 
And it didn't help that Fred Durst is a douchebag. No, nah, he is another and guy the that is a, is a dick. weirdo douche. All, nozzle. Yeah, all over the place, man. But I tell you what, I love that band. There man. was I a stretch the in the '90s and early 2000s Durst. where their shit was all over yeah, the radio. It was awesome. And Metallica, they were honoring Metallica, and Metallica was into them. They brought them yeah, out on tour saw, with them. No, they were they were pumping and, out good tunes. I saw Metallica and Limp Bizkit at Woodstock '99. They were both awesome, but Limp Biscuit's energy, dude, it was incredible. They wrote some great fucking songs. Incredible. The rap metal thing was a genre that maybe didn't need to happen. No, but no. they did it. They wrote some catchy. And they did it song. right, and it inspired a, a, a bunch of other bands. Like Fred Durst had a pretty good history as an MC. Yep. Like yeah, like he, he wasn't gonna break any records. He wasn't even Vanilla Ice. No, but the guy could spin a rhyme. And he liked rock, and he had a history of liking rock and metal music, and they created a background sound for him. Yeah. And they wrote some fucking catchy songs. Yeah, they did. Is, is it musically deep? No. No, it's not. No. It's, it's just fun to listen. It's like great That's party like, music, At the same man. time, that same it. type, it all came out at that same corn. Um, it's the whole new metal thing. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was corn and... Uh, Rage Against the Machine. Deftones. Deftones. Um, Deftones are actually good. Well, they evolved. You know what I mean? Um, Corn. Eh. I I liked them at the time. Are they fucking extremely talented? No. Well, but they're only a band still making viable new they, music. But they are making viable still music. Yeah, you're right. And, yeah, but, Mudvayne. Mudvayne was cool. Mudvayne I liked yeah. a lot. And that turned into Slip. But, my, but Mudvayne was metal. You know, they didn't have so much of that Seven rapping. Um, but they had the same collaboration. rhythms. Yeah, they did. It was that stop start. Well, that stuff. was that, yeah, that was that that time. But they weren't so much of uh, rapping. Like, and then you got Rage Against the Machine, who they got some songs that I like. They were um, love that political. Um, you they were know, exhausting. They were ex- they were exhausting because they were repetitive. I totally don't agree you know? with their politics, the, but I no, love their freaking music. No, they, 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 they were rocked, they dude. were great when they first came up, but it was it was repetitive and it was sickening. Just like they also and I don't give enough. a shit and I don't give a shit. Yeah. Right? It was fucking Lincoln Park repetitive. Listen, it was like listening to your fucking seatbelt alarm going off. <laughs> driving in the car is what it's like. Beep, 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 beep. That's what it's like to me. So I fucking, yeah, I might like it for the first fucking three minutes, but no, I don't want to listen to it for fucking You're three You're going to go through your windshield. <laughs> yeah. In the right. end. Yeah. Yeah. So you know? just put your seatbelt on and change the yeah. dial, right? I'm one step closer to the dash, and yeah. I'm about to break. <laughs> yeah. I hope I'm about to break. No, I don't... It fucking, that, that, so it got, Sickening to me, you know what I mean. But I, let me ask you this then, because I Limp Bizkit's gonna be a polarizing thing to put on this show. Yep. I don't listen to them now. I know they're still making music. Yeah. Are they? Yeah, I've they are. Yeah. They're, they're, yeah, they're, they're making some shit. Really? They they put out like two albums in the last five years. I didn't know years. that. Yeah, yeah. I, nobody cares. You know, I read the metal sites, so I. They see might it. be good. I don't know. I I'll don't never know. know. I'll never know. I don't have enough interest in going back that way. Yeah. But let me ask you this: Should they have been bigger? Or maybe were they just representative of a moment in time, and that's where they need to stay? I think that's exactly where they yeah. need to stay. They I weren't th- bigger than what I mean. They, what they got in like notoriety and everything no, wasn't yeah, bigger than it's, it's, what they should have had. And to be honest with you, they I were think, great, but they weren't like anything hugely special. You didn't think they were going to evolve like right. uh, like a Metallica? No, they would. Yeah, never, they weren't going to continue on for thirty years. Or even like Aerosmith, who I hate. I despise Aerosmith from moment one to moment now. I hate them. But Aerosmith in the beginning doesn't sound like Aerosmith in the nineties, no, right. and it certainly doesn't sound like Aerosmith that's now. Right, right, right. Yeah, that's why I could I but, could not see Limp Bizkit going through that no. change. It would be that. It would have to be that groove. Kind of music. They, they struck such a distinct sh- sound that exactly. they have to stink, stick right. with it. Stink with it. <laughs> nice. They, no, they have to stink s- with they it. They got to stick with it. But you're right. And I don't exactly fault them for it. that. They they no. got their fame out of it, and it was good. And like you said, but when when you say Limp Biscuit to me, immediately, like you said, it does immediately brings me back to that time that point in time, yeah, in my life when I was like, these guys are awesome. And it brings back those memories of that time in my right. life, you know. And then 
it hanging out with my apartment, getting yeah. fucked up every yeah. single night. Exactly. Yeah, I remember Same thing. Days. System of a Down. <laughs> yeah, that. Oh my who god. Who is a band of incredible musicians, but I I haven't heard anything they've released recently. I don't well, know if they, they have. Done anything. They haven't they, done anything. They hate each other. But they were uh, technically, to me, that was representative of that time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um. So I guess that yeah, that's fucked up. So I guess they had a a, a timestamp. Yeah, they they had a uh, an expiration punch date. clock. Yeah, but you look at a band like Metallica. Now Metallica got famous like most metal bands for being youthful rage. Yeah, the bands that we loved in the eighties and nineties that evolved are still writing about angry things, but it's more mature angry thing. Right. I don't yeah. think a band like Limp Bizkit would have made it because it was all about youthful angst and rage. And punching and, your face, yeah, breaking I'll your face. break your fucking face. Getting your fucking chain off. Yeah. Like, I don't think that, you know. They, Which was awesome. What was the most mature chain. song they wrote? A cover of The Who. Yeah. And it was they did Behind Blue Eyes. Yeah. And they wanted to show that Fred Durst can sing and yep. that they could play slow. And that was the whole point of that ballad, and it failed miserably because we haven't heard from them since. No. They did yep. a stadium tour with Metallica in 2001 and nothing since. And I think that's what happened. It was transparent. They were trying to grow it. It wasn't natural. We brought up this whole topic because we're celebrating 52 weeks of yep. doing this nonsense. Okay, and that's just live on the internet. 59, I'd say. Yeah, yeah 59 We've been weeks. doing this a long fucking time. We're celebrating things that maybe didn't get the credibility they deserved. Maybe. So we've proven that we kind of overcame the fact that nobody thinks anybody should be doing another podcast with three guys sitting around talking. Yeah. Okay. Today's idea of a podcast is all, well, it's got to have a theme or storyline or whatever else. And it's got to have a purpose. Yeah. We don't have a fucking purpose. We've came in with none of that. <laughs> yeah. That, but, but that was with the whole point. That. Right but that was the whole point. Again, we we've, just... We we were just a bunch of friends. We wanted out, to have right? this conversation right after ca- talking about ghost babies. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's, exactly. That's what it is. And that's, and that's it what is. it is. But so, yeah, I think the takeaway is everything has a lifespan. I yes. don't know what ours is yet. Let's hope Who it's knows? like 15, 20 years. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Listen, that, man, that was where I was going with it because I, Mike's I, not going to make it past that. No, no. definitely <laughs> not. But. No, no, <laughs> no. I, I said years, not minutes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you guys will be at my sides at the fucking old folks' home. Don't worry. Nah, we you, what are you talking about? You'll be dead long before that. No way, way before. You ain't hitting no old folks' no home. Way. I'll right be to alive. the right to I'll the be casket. Alive way after you. Straight guys. to the casket. Way. I'm just gonna wait for that phone call. Leslie's gonna be like, Mike. Yeah. It's gone. No. I'll be like, all right, I'll be there in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was happening. She does that when he takes 40 minutes to get yeah. the mail. No way. <laughs> Mike I'll, is gone forever. I'll be a fat ghost baby flying all around you guys. I'm just curious, yeah, a though. A fat you, ghost baby. <laughs> when you turn 55 and you're a pervert, do they call it pedicare? <laughs> <laughs> And that's my final pedophile joke that's for the it. night. <laughs> All right, so let's move on to other things. 52 weeks where we drove here, brought a shit ton of alcohol, bothered your wife, ignored your mother-in-law, and, yep. pet your dog, <laughs> Same thing and I do recorded this shit. And, and recorded, it. yeah. So what better way, since Craig already kind of touched on this in his Week in Review, let's talk about old people. Yep. And this headline really, really hit home for us because we can see ourselves there in five, seven years. Exactly. Definitely. Uh, in Germany at the Wacken Music Festival. They call it a rock and roll festival, but let's be real. This is a death metal, thrash it's metal. open air metal festival. Metal festival. 100,000 plus. Two elderly men who I believe were in their early 80s broke out of their nursing home. Yep. Okay, and hit up this festival and wandered into the crowd, walkers and all. Yeah. <laughs> and nobody blinked. Nobody cared. <laughs> now, there's 120,000 people there on average. Yeah. It's a sea of people. I've seen videos from this. It's insane. It's insane. It is. And uh, I want to go there someday, but that's a side note. Uh, I don't want to go as an elderly man. <laughs> <laughs> what the best part though, was they found them wandering around because they found their <laughs> tennis balls on the ground walking through the fucking crowd. And uh, they were carrying Mike's music playlist. 
<laughs> so that's how we knew. Him. Yeah. <laughs> <identified> him. yeah. <laughs> but that's how I'd want to die, man. I, I just I think I'd want to be surrounded by young people being young. Uh, yeah. And I think that's what they wanted to do. Well, I don't know how much of a fan they were of the music, but they definitely knew there was a big event going on for young people. And these are people hanging on to the last vestiges of their life. Let them have it. Yeah. What's the big fucking What's issue? What's the big fucking deal? People obviously made room for them. Of I course. I don't think anybody was They throwing... weren't injured. They weren't they, they, they weren't in despair. There wasn't a giant circle you know? pit going on matter, with them tossed around. Matter of fact, the, the well, the news people said that when they got there, they, they seemed disoriented and dazed. And I think it was Molly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think they were just partying. No doubt. No. I bet you they bought that before they even went yeah. in. <laughs> Walking. Like they've got like their nursing home bracelets and then their like alcohol. I'm old enough to drink bracelets. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if they were Alzheimer's patients, it's possible they thought it was a Hitler, Hitler Youth rally. <laughs> it was Germany, you know. <laughs> you know? If they were Alzheimer's patients, it's possible it's Mike. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what's funny is I used to work at a I used to work at this pizza place that was right next door to a veterans home, and there was two guys that used to come in all the time. This guy Roger and this guy Nicholas, right? And they're both World War II veterans. And Roger would come in every day and he would order one beer. And one day I was sitting in there. So he ordered one beer and he was funny. He'd tell stories. He was awesome. And he ordered one beer and I gave him a second one. He said, I can't drink that. And I'm like, why? He's like, because if they smell alcohol in my breath, they can make me put my pajamas on and stay in my room. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? You're a World War II veteran Here with all your again. faculties. He, wa- he used to walk to the pizza place. You have all your faculties. You're not like, you know, you don't have dementia. You're not Alzheimer's. You know, you walked here to get lunch and you had a beer. Yeah, you can't up. have two fucking beers. And not only that, they're taking your full salary. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, they, that's now you live there. They take everything that you get. So one day I got him hammered. <laughs> and I said to him, fuck it. What's better? I said, right, you want you want to have fun right now? Go back, slap your pajamas on, go to bed? <laughs> you know what I mean? And come back tomorrow? That's well, how I would, feel after day you know? drinking. I'm all for it. Yeah. So I, I was like, fuck it. I gave him a bunch of beers. He potted up. But then you but him and him Nicholas again? used to come in all the time together. This guy, Nicholas. And everybody called him Nick, you know. But one day, Nick doesn't show up. And I'm like... Roger was Nick. I got a little nervous, like thinking, like, oh, you know, because I mean, this was daily. These guys came in here forever, so I was like, oh, you know, you know, where's Nick? And he's like, oh, he's like, I, he took off yesterday, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, so they're like, I'm like, really? So the next day he comes in. They, he's like, they haven't found him yet, <laughs> and he's like talking to me like, yeah, he got away, like he made it, <laughs> you know, like, like, so funny. freedom. Yeah. <laughs> And the red talking about. So the funny thing here. was is, and this is I, this is the God's honest truth. I swear to God, they found them the second day, at night. So when the next day they came in, Roger came in by himself, and I said they still haven't found them. He said, "Oh no, they found them last night. He can't, he can't leave." <laughs> <laughs> they found him in a motel in Providence with two hookers. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. yeah. Did you actually hear my arms go yeah. raising in the air? <laughs> they oh, found Nick. him with two hookers in a hotel in Providence. Oh my god. He, he left, he got on a bus, he went to Providence, he got two hookers and went to a hotel. Well, and he stayed and he was there for two it. days. I paid him well. Yeah. Did the hookers have anything to add to the story? No, I don't no, because I think when they found him, I think it was more of a less more or less they were looking for him. Found out that because of his identification that he checked into a hotel because kind of a thing went out like yeah. those silver, warning, oh, yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> and yeah, and they found that he checked into a hotel, but the people that went and got him was the VA that went and got him. So they're well, like, you whatever. Needed two, obviously, them. you needed two hookers, one to hold it. Yeah, <laughs> one to slap it. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, God's honest truth, and that was the funniest thing ever. That's pretty fucking cool, yeah. man. I can imagine a day later, ladies, hold on, I'm getting hard. <laughs> and then they gave him a nitrous pill. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But so, yeah. I don't know, man. I, I, I want to know, though, like, how did they even get there? Like, we talked about a guy getting to Providence on the bus. It's not that hard. No, it's straight You can line. get away. There's enough old people walking around this town. They could 
get out. Yeah. When you were a pair of German men in hospital clothing and you yeah. want, and you wander up to the gates of a heavy metal festival and you, you expect to see some outlandish things. But if you see two guys walking in, are you just scanning their badges? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome. Enjoy your stay. No drinking. And they yeah, got yeah. in, so they must have had tickets. Oh, th- this was planned. Yeah. And there was a band they want. I don't know who they wanted to see. They that, never got that far. But. I mean, that's the greatest part. Imagine these two guys at the, back at, at the place. They're like, we're going it. to this fucking like, festival. They're like thinking about <laughs> it, you know? I feel like, bad going to shows alone now because I feel like I'm like weird and old. Yeah, and hanging out at the death metal show with all the kids, and that there's that, like that one guy with his arms crossed in the back. Yeah, and that's me, and I'm watching the show, and I'm doing my thing, and I don't want to be that guy, you know? Like I don't want to be old and weird, and I realize I'm doing me. the whole Greg Barron thing right now, but I don't care. Yeah, like I just I don't. He struck a note with that because I don't ever want to go to a death metal show feeling like that. But I'm 42. Yeah, I'm gonna feel like that. What if I'm 92? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Am I still allowed to go to club shows? Yeah. Or am I just going to ruin everybody's night? You got those big cataract sunglasses on. <laughs> <laughs> <I> guess, <laughs> Who's yeah. on? Who's yeah. on right now? Who yeah. is that? Well, that's the beauty of death metal. No, you, nobody you need to see. You just yeah, got out exactly. here. You just got here. Yeah. Oh, he is whistling freaking air. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, see, so you know what? That was the uh, old people. Old people portion of the show. Yeah, we got that out of the way between your week in review and that. We got some old people yeah. done. We're going to we're gonna we're move gonna, on. You know what? Can I raise a glass? Yeah. The old people yes. doing what they want to do. Exactly. We need, we need booze. Okay. okay. We're going we're, we're gonna to raise a glass to those guys, not only for going to heavy metal shows, but also for farting on young people's faces. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's fantastic. And yeah, you know what? By cool. the way, you deserved it. Exactly. Yeah, that's payback. We actually paid her for what you did to us a month ago and in this fucking basement. It was, oh, the, my the God. The funny thing was, is it was, an intelligent, was it was an intelligent escape plan. These guys made it to the festival, enjoyed it, had a blast. Now, <laughs> we move on to New Jersey. From uh, Germany to New Jersey. The home of intelligence. If you could picture that little Indiana Jones red dot flying, <laughs> flying across the map I mean, to New is Jersey there any, right now. Any, like, yeah. it, any more of an intellectual difference that you can get from yeah. like, Germany to New Jersey? <laughs> yeah. But there was a, um, a young man, early 20s. He died this weekend. Sad. Very sad. Very sad. But he died in a holding his breath contest. <laughs> Unbelievable. He died in a pool in the backyard at a party to see who could hold their breath the longest on the water. <laughs> now, let me tell you something. Ridiculous. That's the fucking competitive spirit people are looking for. <laughs> yeah, no shit, <laughs> right, yeah. man. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, whatever it takes. <laughs> and like that movie, I like, no oxygen, no pulse, can't lose. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, I can't you know. lose. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> this is yeah. I went, was it? Were there a lot? Of- <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. I take a piss for one minute. <laughs> Holy shit! Did I mean, you just quote Friday Night yeah, Lights? Yeah. It was like Friday Night Lights out for this motherfucker. Yeah, and I was yeah there. exactly. Like, how great so, is that? What about the other fuck? Out? I mean, how many people were in on this contest? I wonder. What, there had to be bystanders, like sitting there, like, wow, this. Oh yeah. Holy shit, 36 Wow, he's minutes. good. This guy's yeah. awesome. He's good. But let me ask you the obvious question. When you die under the water from drowning, did you win or lose? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, that, guess right? Bold, right? I thought the whole no. idea was to hold your breath the longest, but then Actually, win. he is holding his breath the longest. He's still, he's still holding still doing it. it. <laughs> well, but then Actually, he did no. it. He breathed in. <laughs> Technically. Yeah. Yeah. But I think we're missing the obvious point here. This was a bachelor party. Yeah. <laughs> Some motherfucker's wedding is ruined right now. Yeah, but the best man has the ring, and it's still floating in the pool yeah. with him. <laughs> <laughs> you, I mean, there's some bride is crying right now, <laughs> which, honestly, I think is hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> I'm all for that. Anytime a bridezilla can just suffer just because pull. some asshole frat boy who has never grown up dies, Yeah, the world's better for it. Yeah. That is just fucked up. How does that happen? I'm just saying, like, I'm, I'm, like, sure I'm good. I'm not fucking. So, whoop, whoop. Like, you start getting. You know, you ever held your breath? You want to know the answer? And you start, and you start getting that. Yeah. Like, I'm gonna breathe in. So you hit this. Like, he was like, nope. 
I'm fucking and doing this. He wasn't this. trapped in the ocean underneath waves that were knocking him down. No. He was in a chlorinated pool. Yes. So, do you want to know how it happened? Let's raise a glass again, gentlemen. Yeah. That's, you know, because <laughs> this is our answer. Oh, exactly. That's right. Yep. He must That's have been right. Also, inebriated. Molly. And Molly. And yeah. Molly. <laughs> I love but, that we're just whipping out 2008 drug reference. You think so? Now that guy's pool's haunted. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> Imagine what that sounds like. Some ghost under the water. <laughs> Every time you jump in, it's like. <laughs> 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 yeah. It's just every time that your filter makes a bubble coming out of there, yeah. it's actually a ghost. Yeah, it's a ghost. Yeah, you walk out in the morning, there's wet footprints around the edge of the pool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like fucking your house, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which kind of leads us to our next one. Oh, yeah, we're just jumping right off that. Um, <laughs> really isn't much to say. You're from Jersey? No, you, you're Jersey, you drown yourself. You drown yourself. Yeah. You didn't slip. You didn't get hurt. Is it a suicide? Yeah. Uh, in Jersey, they call it population control. It's like hunting season. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like frat boy or like deer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, with apologies to our friends at the Damaged Goods Network. Right. Who yeah. happen to call New Jersey home. Yes. All right. What's our next topic, guys? Because uh, we, we, I think we can all agree guys like that shouldn't breed. But uh, thanks to them, dumb people won't be breeding much longer. No. So let's get into a little section we like to call weird sex. And I say we like to call it that because we've introduced it just now. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Craig, introduce us, if you would. A woman who is in love with the ghost now wants to have babies with them. It's the girlfriend but... of the guy from the pool. Yeah. yeah, that's a, yeah that's a, <laughs> yep. Now, she, it's an Australian woman. And she's, she said that she's had so many bad relationships and then when she broke up with her last boyfriend four years ago, she's had multiple sexual relationships with ghosts since then. Now she was on a she said she was on a hike in the bush, you know? <laughs> yeah. Just, so was I was like, yeah. <laughs> she's in the bush in her front yard. <laughs> but she said all of a sudden she felt this overwhelming um sense of happiness and she knew that it was another lover coming to Coming? Yeah, <laughs> coming, coming, I guess. <laughs> you know, coming to her. So now she's having this relationship with this ghost, and I'm throwing air quotes up in the air. Well, does he keep showing up? Yeah, apparently he does. Now she wants to have a baby with him. And she says, and I quote, I want to have a ghost baby with him. <laughs> a ghost baby. And she said it's not all that uncommon. That is fucked. They know that she's. He's right. It's not all that that uncommon. That's fucking bullshit. She should really adopt one of those millions of ghost babies out there. I mean, come <laughs> on, lady. What the <laughs> fuck? Think about the. Whole, think about them. Jesus Christ. Is that is that like the cold breeze I feel at night? Yeah. yeah. Millions of ghost adopted babies. ghost babies flying through my yard. Well, the funny babies. thing is, They're when everywhere. she said it, I realized it, it. It's it's not as rare as you'd think. On average, 650,000 ghost babies are not born at Planned Parenthood every year. <laughs> wow. yeah, I wasn't sure true. where you were going with that. Yeah. That's fucking true. I thought you were going to give me a quote that this ghost told her that there were 650,000. I'm like, what a boring fucking ghost yeah. to fuck. <laughs> a ghost is going to come fuck you and then talk statistics. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing is it's just a pale neighbor upstairs they got caught watching her sleep <laughs> and realized she was so gullible he's like I'm a go Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought you were going to tell me she was just dreaming because you know in addition to having all these ghost dreams she was also having carpal tunnel syndrome from fingering herself yeah. the <laughs> fuck that noise now I mean she literally said ghost baby I want a ghost baby. Mike, you did have a good marketing plan this week, though. What do you think? Oh, definitely. I, I think we, we should sell gl empty glass vials and label them as NTS ghost sperm. Right? Oh, Now she wants shit. to get pregnant. We'll freaking see you know, ghost just, sperm. Yeah, just inject. You have some a ghost invisible, baby? Invisible You're all ghost set. Sperm. It, would, it would be great, except we're going to get slapped with a fucking... Parenthood lawsuit. <laughs> no, it's yeah, funny. Yeah. We could just have a whole ba Blake page of fucking yeah. ghost, a fucking line of ghost baby clothes. <laughs> go 
we should show that. We should also yes. have like a gallery of like ghost families. Yeah. And, it, and it's just blank backgrounds. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what I mean. You just open the envelope. There's nothing in it. Like, nope, there's, nope, there's ghost. a ghost baby fucking onesie in there. I, <laughs> yeah. I do want to see a, like one of those ghost baby um, Olin Mills photos. Like the the baby's like looking at you in one and up in the corner, like the baby's yeah. looking to the side, yeah. except there's no one there. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a Norman Rockwell picture of chairs. <laughs> yeah. And an empty plate because it was yeah, a ghost yeah, turkey. Was a too. Girl, yeah. <laughs> that special that special sun flare in the corner. I call this one ghost baby. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck! Pick the headlines. This <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think it might have been me. All right. So uh, the other weird sex one, something physical. Yes, something a little more grounded on Earth. Man had sex with a pony. Family ponies up behind him. Says he's a good Christian boy. Yeah, <laughs> he's oh, so he boy. is. He is. Now we've, you know, bestiality is something that we haven't covered on the show, but something we've discussed in our private lives. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking squarely at Mike <laughs> all the time, but Wee! honestly, we, at least we know this is something that goes on in Afghanistan. And whenever people get lonely out there, when they're waiting to kill the infidels, I need to know. <laughs> a man had sex with a pony is claiming to be a good Christian. Where do you have to be in your life? <laughs> yeah, <you're> right. <laughs> exactly. His mother thought he was weird when he played with my little pony as a child. Never mind now. <laughs> do, do you think like like he licked his finger and then rubbed it a little bit first? And, and no, then man. I don't think the physiology changes. I think you still got to prime it. Yeah, that's what I mean. Before you ram it. Yeah. That's fine. I, what I want to know is, you know, most little girls want a pony. They're really hard to come by. How did this guy just stumble on one? <laughs> <laughs> and then develop a sexual relationship yeah. with This one was really easy to come by. You know what yeah. I'm <laughs> <laughs> And this is why whenever I make bestiality jokes, I look squarely at you. Yeah, that's me. I understand that. I just don't quite understand where, they're, where somebody could be in their life. You'd be like, you know, I could go get a hooker like that old man. Yeah. Or I could go just beat off mercilessly. Yes. Or I can take every little girl's dream toy. <laughs> yeah, and fuck and it in the backyard. And shove my dick in there and then find one that's so lazy that it doesn't run the fucking yeah, way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I don't I don't understand. Uh, I don't that's that's not a that's, desperation thing. No, it can't be. That's a sick be. thing, dude. That's, that's a, a sick, sick thing. thing because, I mean, I remember growing up as a kid... You know, when you're when you're a teenager, when you hit about fourteen, all you give a shit about is getting laid. You start getting that age, and you're like, "I need to get laid. I need to get laid." Because you you start. <laughs> he wanted finding, to get naked. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I need to get naked. I need to get naked. That's fucked up. I'm no, sorry. but I mean, that was such a cheap joke. That's <laughs> yeah. it's your it's. You're driving force behind every like 15 year old kid, you know what I mean? Because <laughs> you that's when you first discover, you know, a play like for us, it was Playboy magazines, but for these kids, it's you know, the internet, you know, and stuff <laughs> and like horse that. fancy, <laughs> yeah, and ho- yeah. <laughs> but so you know, I get it, but never as a kid did I think to myself. I want. I need to get laid so bad. You know what? I'm gonna fuck that fucking animal over dude, there, dude. Dude, I, you, know? I, you guys know. I grew up on a farm. That is fucking yeah. Well, then sick. offer us some first person oh, insight. It's terrible. Yep. It's sick. I don't know. That's just. He's like the kick hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> gotta wear boots. <laughs> you gotta wear boots. Yeah. You gotta have a good tread on your boots. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and a leather belt. And house. a like a small step ladder. Yeah. <laughs> Half of the sheep call me dad. <laughs> See, I think the big argument here, though, is it isn't so much that a sick guy wanted the fucking animal. That's not newsworthy. It's the fact that his family immediately rushed to his side. <laughs> yes. And, and wanted to. Just remind us that he's like, he's good he's with Christ. A good Christian. He's Christian. No, yeah, you're Christian. not. Technically, he's still a virgin. He's waiting for the one. He's waiting for the one woman. He's just <laughs> fucking. He's just <laughs> fucking, in the meantime. Yeah. He's just fucking Bobo in the field yeah. right now. That's right. <laughs> you know. That's right. His his wife is waiting, but, but that yeah. pony was his mistress. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like masturbating, except with a live animal that doesn't know any better. Yeah. Exactly. I agree. But you know, at what point does Christianity? Because honestly, I think you know this is the definition of modern Christianity. 
the fact that somebody could, a parent could come and defend their child yep. and say, hey, yeah, he's still a good Christian. In what fucking world? Based no, on the tenets terrible. of modern Christianity, I guess he is. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. he'll, he'll fuck anybody. Yeah. Because that's, that's what terrible. they do. But I need to know, like, I don't know, man. How easy. And a, a, no. As being raised Catholic, they didn't even want you jerking off. Never mind fucking animals. <laughs> Well, well, no, but they never told us not it. to yeah. fuck a pony. Well, yeah. Yeah. They told us not to touch ourselves because that's a sin. Yeah. Okay, but go ahead and you know run around the petting Actually, zoo. Yeah. Have that, at that was it. Never, that's not even in the fucking Ten Commandments. You fuck all the fucking ponies you want. <laughs> God damn! I wasted fucking fifteen through sixteen. <laughs> all those years. All those years you were chasing Fran. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Could have been chasing ponies. <laughs> right. I could just fucking just easier to catch. That. They're like, ah, fuck it. I'm gonna Fred go over here. Just easier to catch. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just gonna wander onto Mike's family's property and fucking. T- <laughs> Fred was an easier catch. You ain't gonna chase that pony. She bucked yeah. harder. <laughs> I didn't even need a sugar cube. <laughs> oh my god. I'm, I'm, I'm not picturing your wife naked, but I'm just imagining you two in the bedroom, her in lingerie, and her kicking backwards and knocking your ass across. Put into the wall. And then, and, the and then in her voice going, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Greg. I'm never allowed at your house again. Never. Never. Yeah. never. <laughs> Holy shit. No, Holy that's shit. fucking Holy nuts. Shit. I don't understand, you know, and it's, bestiality is something that's been going on Forever, you know what I mean. But yeah, now it's getting forever. to a point where, like, people... stop making it sound like we're acknowledging it. No, no, you're, you're like, oh, it's cool. No, you know, it's not those, cool. Those of you guys have been into bestiality for a long time. <laughs> yeah, All right, it's, it's not. If you're a lifer, cool. hey, we need more listeners. Uh, no, what I'm saying, it's been, it's been around forever, <laughs> but <laughs> now it's coming to this thing where people want to fucking like. There's a guy in in London that wants to marry his fucking horse. You know what I mean and shit because he's like in love with this horse, and and. It's fucking sick. It's fucking nuts. I mean, I guess it's no different from those people that fucking get those life-size sex dolls and fucking drive around with them and fucking do crazy shit. Well, if I had a life-size sex doll, and I don't, before you start making the jokes, (laughs) but I don't know why they drive around with them. I understand the need for uh, like having a physical body. Inflatable dolls ain't going to do it. No. Okay. No, I'm talking about those... Like silicone, no, no, the, the, like crazy yeah, the, like the life size ones. I've seen yeah. them. Uh, it, well, not in person, <laughs> <laughs> but I get life. the need that if you want to wake up next to a body and yeah. it's something you can just have your way with, I kind of get that. If you're a pervert, why are they driving around with them? Yeah, like, like you want the world the, to know that you're lonely and pathetic. Like putting them in the car. There was that. I watched that video. That guy driving around with it. Not only that. Bringing it into a restaurant with awesome. oh yeah, and awesome. sitting it in a chair, Putting and the fucking thing's it. just sitting there like a like a mannequin eh, with its mouth. No matter open. how expensive yeah. they are, <laughs> every <laughs> sex doll's got the same face. Surprised? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wonder, did it, did he yeah. buy? Did he get her a meal and shit? I'm wondering. Like, I don't did he get know. Her like a, a dual meal. Oh, I'm sure, he gave her some sausage later, oh. but. Uh, that was yeah. I wish I had that fucking yeah. I wish I had that sound effect. I wish I had that sound effect right now. No, but <laughs> that, but I mean the things just We're sitting talking there about fucking sex dolls. Yeah. guys taking out sex dolls for dinner. Taking it to dinner, sitting and, in a restaurant, and, and things sitting there smelling it. like bleach and fucking <laughs> you need to rub fucking wearing clothes with fake fucking lipstick on it and shit. And it, you it's know, a night out. It is a night out, I guess. <laughs> It's, hey, it's cheap so date. easy though. Cheap date. Well, not fucking. really. It gets up front there a lot of money, but yeah, because you know she's gonna. I guess want it pays it. for itself within a fucking eat. week. Because if you're <laughs> that much of a freak, that guy's fucking banging that thing nine times a day. <laughs> if you're going, if you're, if you're fucking, if you're going out with a fucking with a plastic doll. A rubber doll. Do you have to go walk around with a fucking tube repair kit in case you fucking just in case? You never know, oh, so, Mike. You know. If you had one of these dolls, they you'd get the model. They'd still got a headache and rolled over. <laughs> 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 
I got it on sale. He squeezes his right hand. It's like, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not tonight. He squeezes his left hand and says, I told you. Yeah. No. He's got the G.I. Joe ninja chop built in every time he touches his ass. <laughs> no. No. Are you done yet? You got to get the kung fu grip with that shit. Man. I got the talking one. Not in my eye. <laughs> Are you done yet? Yep. Are you done yet? Oh done my yet? god, I can't yet? believe we're even talking about these fucking dolls. Right? 52 episodes, and this is where we ended up. This is where up. we ended up. We did, hey, we had sex. Well, we got one more. Yep. All right. We got one more, and it, it involves humans. It does. Interacting with other humans. Yes. And also cars. And cars. All right. So <laughs> Riding in cars with dolls. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. You no, know, this was a real woman. No, this is this a, real a real person. woman in England. Uh, she was driving up the coast, enjoying a holiday, as they call it overseas. With her daughter, it was two women. Wow. Oh, it was with her daughter. Having her daughter yes. there just makes this creepier. Yep. Because the, the headline is what caught my attention. I didn't even really get into the story too much, but women's seaside trip ruined by man repeatedly banging penis on car window. Yep. <laughs> Growing up in New York, we used to have the issue with the guys. Every time you had a red light in the city, some guy would come with newspaper and a bottle of Windex. And try to clean your windows and yeah. then bang on your window. It and, wasn't Windex. No, nah, well. <laughs> <laughs> whatever meth juice looks like, I don't know. But he tried to clean my windows with it and he would force you to give him a f- couple bucks. Usually you give him five bucks, get the fuck away from my car, don't wipe anything yeah. down. They always made money. This guy's slapping his dick on the car. What is the expected result? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently what happened was it was her and her daughter and she said in the out. I bring my grandchildren here every weekend, and this weekend they were like they had some plans. So she said, "I thank God that I didn't bring my grandchildren here this weekend." But apparently, this guy was on an all-night binge drinking because he was mortified when they arrested him. Stuff like the guy, like he apologized. Oh, he, really? He, he gave no them idea. money. He apologized. He was fucking like mortified that he did it. You know what I mean? Oh, and no, uh, don't ruin the story, but. No, keep the magic alive. Yeah, all right. Yeah, no. <laughs> edit that part out. So this fucking freak shows up, right? <laughs> That's no. more like it. <laughs> no. So he had been on an all-night binge drinking, and they said that he left the club at 4 in the morning, which apparently the clubs stay open that late. Then he went to his friend's house and continued to drink, and then his friend kicked him out, and he went home and drank by himself. So this motherfucker can potty. God right. Damn. So I got to ask, so, when did you fly to England, Mike? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. If I thought I you mean, could actually lift your dick, you know, uh, yeah, and, yeah, and by lift, I mean help. find. You yeah. Help? <laughs> <laughs> I, wanna, wanna help. yeah. Well, I would totally so, accuse you of running around and slapping your dick on somebody's car window. <laughs> I, what I, you he, know, I would. I would. Well, I would. He's, <laughs> <laughs> so what he did I, was he, what, he was staggering around this park a lot, and they were parked down at Seashore. And they had just gotten fish and chips at fucking 8.30 in the morning fucking Brits with their crazy <laughs> shit. Yeah, because yeah, that's and, the problem with the story. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Who's eating fig- I wish fish and chips fish and at fucking chips. 8.30 in the morning? I wish Cholesterol, I could Cholesterol, motherfucker. You know? Dude, come on, man. I but wish anyway, I could get fish and chips at 8.30 in the morning around here. So they we'll slap your there. dick on a car window. See what happens. <laughs> so he walked up to the car, and I guess he started banging on the window. And they started yelling at him to get away from the car. So he stopped for a second, turned around, unzipped his pants, turned around, and then just started banging his fucking cock on the window. The best is if you read the article and the quotes from the women, the, the, the daughter says, I rolled the window down and threw my chips at him and then encouraged my mother to do the same. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, throw your potato. Well, you know, feed I mean, the man. Like, feed throw the your man. fucking french fries saying? at the guy. So they're throwing at him as a yell at him and you know what I mean and degrade him so he backs up and pulls his pants down and takes a shit <laughs> right on the side of their car like now, punctuation the whole, the, the whole thing is you're thinking why didn't they just back away oh my god yeah why, just leave you're in a car they couldn't they were they were parked and someone had parked behind them oh and blocked them god, in and they couldn't pull out oh. which 
which gets me to say they could have pulled out, but it was two women driving, so it was probably <laughs> you know, there was enough space. There was plenty there was of space. Definitely enough space. But yeah. they, and neither know, one of them wanted to get out yeah, to direct. They, yeah, yeah, they yeah, couldn't yeah. do it. You know. So <laughs> <laughs> now they're dealing with dick prints on their window and a turd fucking by the door. Oh my god! What did that, what, can you imagine just sitting in the driver's seat and you're driving some little British car and they're like that like greasy snail? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there's like a trail in your window now because yeah. this guy's dick wasn't clean. He had been drinking yeah. for days. Well, this guy, yeah. this guy's slapping his fucking wiener on the fucking on the window, but and they open the windows to throw the fucking fries out. Yeah, come on, man, they're, just they're, eat they're it off. That's where a moonroof comes in very handy. Yeah, there yeah, you go. Exactly. Probably, probably, I would have just continued to eat. And turn yeah. the radio louder. Yeah. <laughs> if I was blocked in, I was like, chips, all right, just look yeah, this man. way and ignore. I them. mean, I, admittedly, I wouldn't enjoy it as much, you know, eating my lunch, but I wasn't going to lose that spot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, my thing is, I've been fucked up and no. I've done some fucking stupid shit being no. fucked up. That's how the show started. No. But, I've, yeah, but I've never been whale my dick on this lady's window. And then shit on the side of her car fucked up. I mean, the first never part, happened. The first part, I might have been that fucked up, but the second part, the, the shit part, I don't think I've ever been that no, fucked up. Yeah, that, I mean, that's just fucking insane. I don't know. All right, fellas, we are at that point. And uh, for the first time in many weeks, we're at that 90-minute point. Yep. How do you like that? I like it. All right, well, let's Definitely. do a little housekeeping. Let's wrap this thing up. Social media. At NTS underscore podcast on Twitter, on Facebook. Go check us out. Leave us a comment. Drop us some hate mail. Do what you have to do. Just reach <laughs> out. Send us a private message like a handful of people have done recently. It turned out to be a good thing. We've made some podcast friends. So, yeah, send us a message. Let us know what's up. If you like the show, if you hate the show, tell us what's going on. Also, she's down in Savannah, and things just move a little bit slower in the south. So we got to wait a little bit longer for NTS rundowns, but still keep an eye on the site. Christy's on it. That's another one. Go, Christy. We have another big announcement. It's something I'm really proud of because yep. I did all the fucking design for it. Yeah. <laughs> but we have merchandise. And yes, I've been we waiting do. to say this. We started about this, about what, episode eight? Yeah. We had one t shirt. Yeah. Okay, well, guess what? We loaded up the merch shop. If you go to teespring.com and search for Needless to Say, it should get you to the Needless to Say swag shop. I'd give you the URL, but it's too goddamn long. Um, but check out our shit. We've got some funny things. Some of them are inside jokes to prove that you're fans of the show. Yep. Some, some of them, them are hilarious. just fucking funny. Yeah. <laughs> And some of them just have our faces on it. If you feel like keeping people at a very good distance behind you, <laughs> yeah, they're yeah. All great, this bro. should work just fine. Uh, <laughs> check it out. Uh, we're working on the pricing, but do me a favor. Show some support for the show. We'd love to, we'd love to have you wear it. We really That's would. it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, we did a conversation tonight. We didn't mention it on the show, but we did a conversation with our friends at Damaged Goods. So yep. there's going to be some cross-posting in the future, but absolutely. I want to give a shout-out to everybody at the Damaged Goods Network. Thank you, guys. So that, that would be too. everybody at Damaged Goods, the the flagship. There would be Shade and Lily over at Daddy Issues. There would be Clay Time at Clay or Clay Miles at Clay Time in the basement. That will be uh, everybody baked and awake. Baked and awake. That would be beta testing, and that yep. would be the three motherfuckers sitting right here, who I yep. think tonight we we prove that we can hang with this network. I think so. Definitely. And then finally, I'd like to give a shout out to our own theme song because we don't have any music to play us out. No. So I, with that, I'd rather hear the harmonious voice of our own Mike taking us out with some thoughts and meditations on the week that was. Weird or dumb? You know, the people we just talked about, are they weird or dumb or both? I mean, who decides on what or who is weird? I mean, if you're dumb, I could pretty much prove it one way or another. <laughs> <laughs> but who says when you're weird? Weirdness is an opinion. I think everyone in their own way has, the, has a weird streak in them. Whether it's the dude down the street who runs around in his front yard <laughs> wearing Speedos yelling, Hooray for badge in a can! Or the 92-year-old <laughs> guy clad in leather and piercings at a metal fest. Don't be afraid of what idiots say. Don't stop doing what you love because of fucking people laughing at you. And most importantly, don't miss next week's episode of Needless to Say. Craig? 
Needless to say, for a year, we have said it.